Hey guys, Buildzoid here with another PCB breakdown video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the R9290X Lightning. I've done this video so many times, it's getting really annoying, so th this will be the last take. Um, so this is quite possibly, no, it's definitely the best R9290X PCB ever made, or at least available to the public. There might be some special prototypes that were better, but you can actually buy this one. So let's first go over just what VRMs we have on the card. I won't be covering any volt modding for the card because it has full voltage control support in software, and I don't know how hard that software is to actually get. I do believe you just need normal afterburner. However, MSI also has something called Afterburner Extreme, and that requires that you contact an MSI representative, and if this card needs that, that can get kind of painful, and you will lose the warranty for this thing. So, yeah, while it does have software voltage, well, software support for everything, it might not be immediately available on the card. I hope it would be, because we do have an LN2 uh, BIOS on the card out of the factory, but... You never know if the software support is actually available for that BIOS just through publicly accessible tools. So let's go over those VRMs now. First of all, right here we got the auxiliary, and it has its own filtering right there. Filtering on the 12 volts, so basically to make sure that if the anything, you know, any kind of mess happens on the 12 volts, the auxiliary VRM doesn't have to deal with it because it has its own small bank of power sitting right behind it. Down here we have the 0.95 volt VRM. You can actually also control this in software based on what people have told me. I've never had the card, I don't know, <laughs> okay? Um, and this doesn't really have anything because, well, it's 0.95 volts and it's really, really low power and so it doesn't get any kind of filtering or anything, but still, it's nice that you can at least control it with software. It's not really important. We're not going to go over its current ratings. Uh, then this monstrosity right here is obviously core voltage, and it's a 12-phase, so you can expect some pretty insane power capabilities out of that, and it also gets its own filtering section right here, made up of several capacitors and three uh, inductors, chokes, coils, whatever the hell you want to call them. I know there's a proper terminology based on what they're being used for, but I can't be bothered looking up what that is. I do believe in this application they are chokes. So, though I do believe these are also chokes. So, let's just leave that the way it is. Uh, here we have the memory VRM. It's a three-phase which is the most uh, memory phases I think anyone has ever put on a card. EVGA also puts three-phase memory VRMs on their Kingpin and classified cards, but I don't think anybody's ever used a four-phase memory VRM. So, yeah, that's a lot of memory VRM. And it also gets its own filtering section, composed of yet another inductor choke, coil, or whatever the hell you want to call it, and two capacitors. Because obviously this is more powerful, so it needs a bigger, you know, power storage sitting behind it. So then, uh, another interesting thing about this, v uh, this card here is we have a VRM located right here, which doesn't actually provide power to the GPU core or memory or any kind of like GPU core, well, GPU functionality related stuff. This here is called the variable gate drive. And the simple way to put it, it's a VRM to power your VRMs. Uh, and basically what it does is it provides a voltage uh, that is then used to switch the MOSFETs inside your core voltage or your memory voltage or whatever VRM on and off. And it has benefits. Uh, the reason why this exists is basically because it allows you to change the efficiency and switching characteristics of the VRM uh, 
you know, at your leisure, instead of having fixed uh, MOSFET properties, you can actually give them higher gate voltages, which will drop their RDS on, and that'll lower, you know, that'll improve voltage regulation and slightly uh, improve your efficiency of the MOSFETs themselves. However, you'll be burning power on the variable gate drive, so your overall efficiency will actually be kind of miserable anyway. Um, so this is very, very useful on an overclocking card where you really, really want to tweak any kind of settings on the VRM. It's not really useful on a card which, you know, will run at stock all of its life because you can just optimize those cards for one setting and one setting only and that'll obviously be way more efficient than uh, any kind of variable gate drive insanity stuff like we have on the Lightning here. So now that's that out of the way, let's cover the other interesting thing about this card. This thing has two full-size voltage controllers. So right here we have the 3567B. I'm not sure if it controls anything other than core voltage, but it's mandatory to use this controller to actually control core voltage. So yeah, that, that's why MSI is using it. Uh, it also puts out two more phases that could be used for auxiliary or the 0.95 volts or some other VRM somewhere. I'm not sure if it's actually getting used to do that. Um, so yeah, and that's a native 6 phase, so obviously that get double, gets doubled up to be the 12 phase core voltage. Over here we have the 3570B, and that's a 3 plus 2, so that provides your memory because obviously this is only a 6 plus 2, uh, and it could also possibly provide the auxiliary... Uh, move away... the auxiliary voltage right there. So, yeah, we have a lot of voltage controllers on this card. I mean, well, a lot of full-size voltage controllers. You can get a lot of smaller, dumber ones, but these are as smart as it gets with variable phase count, uh, well, you can change how many phases are active, they have native support for variable gate drive, uh, what else do they have? Right, they have per phase current sensing, and they can balance the phases based on current going through each phase, and yeah, they're really, 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 really smart, which is great if you have the data sheet for controlling them, not so great if you're trying to mod them, which is why we're not going to be covering volt mods as well as this card does have the software support for all of this, you know, all the fancy, uh, well, all the fancy fi functionality that this, these voltage controllers allow the card to have. So now let's actually get onto the VRMs now that we've covered the all, all the little cool things that I think are cool, but you probably find incredibly boring because we just spent time sitting talking about voltage controllers. Okay. So, first things first, let's cover the core voltage, and it's a 12 phase, it's a doubled up 6. Uh, the doublers and the drivers, or the doubler driver chips, or wh whatever, they're on the other side of the PCB, so I can't actually show them to you here. But this is indeed a native 12 phase. Uh, well, no, doubled up 6. There, sorry about that. Um, here... The low side is obviously the 6894, as you would expect from a reference 290X or an R9 Nano or a Fury X or any number of other high-end AMD cards. These things are really, really freaking good. Um, they offer 160 amps of continuous current at 25 degrees. That's a lot of current. Admittedly, at room temperature, they do derate uh, significantly once you pull them up to 125 degrees, uh, down to 72 amps. However, if your VRM is at 125 degrees, you're doing something really, really wrong. Okay? So, you shouldn't really be ever worried about what they're rated for at 125 degrees. At more reasonable temperatures, like 90 degrees, they do well over 90 amps of continuous, car uh, continuous drain current. So, in total, this VRM can provide way too much current for me to be able to multiply it in my head. Because it's 12 times... I should be able to actually do that one. 90, 100, no, whatever. Let's move on. 
Uh, the low side MOSFETs are 6811s, which are basically used on all the other 290Xs and fewer, yeah, you get the idea. Basically, these are the same uh, MOSFETs that AMD uses on their reference high-end cards. Um, these are rated for 74 amps at 25 degrees and D-rate down to thir just around 32 at 125 degrees. Um, now that does sound really, really weak, but first of all, do take into account that, well, there's 12 of them, so they're all sharing any kind of load, and secondly, these things don't spend most of their time turned on. The low side is dealing with most of the current flow going through the GPU. The high side just sits there and charges up the inductor, and then shuts itself off, and lets the low side do all the, uh, well, the bulk of the continuous current work. So these things don't spend a whole lot of time on, and so it's also important to take into account their uh, burst current ratings. These things are rated for 150 amps at 10% duty cycle, so from 12 volts that would be about 1.2 volts, obviously there will be some losses. Um, at 10 micro or nanoseconds, I need to check the data sheet for that, I forgot. And it is... Give me a second. Oh, wait. Okay, so it's 400 microseconds and the duty cycle is less than 2%. So that's actually really miserable. Damn. Um, so 400 microseconds, that's really, really like, you know, that's... Actually, let's just not try to cover that. But basically... Um, as long as you're not trying to push more than 32 amps per phase through, you know, any of the phases, you don't have to worry about anything. And even if you're pushing slightly above that, you don't really have to worry about anything because these things don't spend most of their time turned on and the, the amount of time you have the current going through the component obviously changes how much, you know, the component gets affected by the current. So... Yeah, did I even... Damn it, I don't think I mentioned what the actual pulse rating was. It's 150 amps. There. Uh, that's out. So if I did mention it, you can hear it twice, and if I didn't, then you get to hear, hear it now. Um, I really shouldn't do these videos this late at night. Um, so yeah, so that's 150 amps pulse, and basically as long as you're pushing less than 32 amps, well, 32 amps or less per phase, there's nothing to worry about, even at 125 degrees. At more reasonable temperatures, you can push as much as 40 amps per phase without worrying about anything, because, again, you know, that that's the ratings. Um, but you should, all, you, you should be able to actually push them slightly above their ratings to s almost match the high sides. Um, uh, well, no, match the low side fats. Um, because there's so many of them and they're not turned on for that long, but that'll obviously be dependent on your core voltage setting. Overall, it really doesn't, uh, it really doesn't matter that they're relatively weak, because even at 125 degrees, there's 12 of these things. You've got 384 amps on tap from the high side. So, and that's continuous, which the high side isn't. There's 12 phases, so the load is share, you know, yeah. So basically you have a, a lot of current available. And I really shouldn't make these videos this late at night. So let's move on to the memory VRM. Luckily, you don't have to listen to me mumble through any more MOSFET specs because these are the same damn thing. So if you didn't catch it the first time, uh, you can go rewind the video. Uh, the auxiliary VRM A is the same damn things, and, you know, just simple multiplication again, so 140 amps, completely overkill for auxiliary, and the memory has 210 amps, because there's three phases, uh, so on the low side, obviously, the high side, we don't want to cover this, it's way too late at night right now, um, so yeah, so basically, you have a crap ton of power available on this card. Um, the memory has, you know, available at least 90 amps at 125 degrees, 
and the auxiliary has at least 64 amps at 125 degrees and your core voltage has at least and now i think i got the math wrong 384 yeah 384 amps at 125 degrees obviously at lower temperatures you can push way 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 more current through everything and that is also you know being extra safe because we're considering the continuous strain current not the actual short bursts that most of these phases will be experiencing. So that about covers all the important VRMs. We're not really going to talk about 0.95 volts, because I don't think that, like, pull, I, as far as I know, that doesn't pull a significant amount of current, and basically, regardless of what MSI chose to use, it shouldn't catch fire. So, yeah, that covers this card, doesn't it? And... What an awesome card it is. And also, I do believe these are voltage checkpoint, uh, voltage checkpoint headers. And, yeah. So, that just about finishes everything about the card. So, now let's get some things out of the way that I need to get out of the way uh, as far as the channel goes. First of all, sorry for not putting out a video for a whole week. Um... Stuff happened. Well, stuff didn't happen. So there's that. Um, other than that, I've been messing around with the RX 480. However, it does not seem that I will be able to actually stream anything worth streaming uh, today, tomorrow. I don't even know. Because, yeah. So the stream, the, the Saturday stream, basically, it's probably not going to happen because. I don't really have anything working that I feel is worth streaming about. I have been doing some pretty cool experiments with the RX 480, so uh, depending on how they work out, uh, I'll share those with you later, or you'll get to see them on a live stream, but right now, don't expect a live stream, basically. Um, so, that's that. Uh, other than that, um, I wanted to do a video about the PCIe stuff, about PCIe power connectors and all that stuff, Except, I figured it'd be really cool if I had some practical demonstrations, and then I realized I don't have the equipment to do that. Uh, not that it's expensive, I just need to go get it. Uh, I can completely afford it, thanks to all the lovely people donating to the channel, so huge thanks to all of you. So, yeah, I just need to get some cables, basically. So, yeah, and, and some other stuff for some other stuff I'm doing. And, uh, and yeah, and that'll get covered. Uh, I still won't be able to measure PCIe slot power draw. That That's just out of my, like, that that's a bit more painful to deal with. But we'll cover the difference between a 6-pin and 8-pin properly. That's what I want to get out of the way. Um, and yeah, that sort of covers everything. Unless being up at 3 a.m. is making me forget something really important, which you'll probably hear announced in another video. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Do you like the new audio settings? Because I'm experimenting with running a compressor and stuff. Because here's the thing, I despise post-production. So I really, really want to avoid post-production. And the other thing is, I run my speakers really, 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 really loud. Just, they're set really loud. So when I do my own audio checks, I don't notice if it's really quiet, because I just turn up my YouTube volume to max, and and it's fine. You know, and funnily enough, it's not like I hear much of a difference from the other videos. So, yeah, sorry about any more audio issues. Hopefully this video is better than the past videos. If it isn't, well, I'll keep experimenting until I get something that freaking works. Or maybe I'll just give up and start doing post-production. So, yeah. Uh, and that should cover everything this time. Yeah, I do believe it does. So, like, share, subscribe, do the age-old ritual of the YouTube, uh, video. And what else? Right. Do please donate. I need to be able to buy more cables. Or maybe another RX 480. Hint, hint. Hint. Either way, see you next time. Damn it, I missed.